Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson is the truth. Running back turbo. I'm the shot ahead, monster. And instead of whipping him, if I roll out the main man, I don't know what the nigga told you, but he should have told you I'm killing him. Texas as promised today uh, we're gonna go over the 17 week including the bye week schedule of the Houston Texans and we'll discuss as to why I land where I land with uh, the record that I'm going to give them um, and uh, off the bat man we, obviously we talked about the Chiefs yesterday so today we'll get to talk about week two for week two the Houston Texans Travel back from Arrowhead with a 10-day gap uh, to play the Baltimore Ravens at home. Uh, am I happy that that's a home game? Yes, because I think it gives us a better chance to uh, prepare for once. And for two, um, we'll be at home. So, you know, if, if we start off slow, you know, you won't have that overwhelming crowd just eating you alive while you're losing like we did last year against them up in Baltimore. But I still think that the Texans don't have enough to cover all the weapons that Lamar Jackson has with the Baltimore Ravens, not to mention the additions that the Baltimore Ravens have done on defense. Listen, they got Calais Campbell to help them really, uh, you know, stop the rush and create some type of pressure. On top of that, they drafted two good slot speedy wide receivers. Uh, one in James Prosh that came out of SMU, big baller last year. And uh, Devin DuVernay uh, from Texas, who also will be in the slot for them and is a speedy receiver. Call this what you want, whether you want to call this a Texans, uh, you know, whether they're reacting to the way that the Texans stacked up on speed or the Chiefs. Uh, look, the top three teams when it comes to wide receivers, I think we're loaded. Listen, they got Miles Boykin, they got Marquise Brown, they got Willie Sneed. They still got their tight ends there, uh, you know, at, with Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle. Uh, you know, their their offensive line, yeah, they, they lost, um, can't really recall his name right now, uh, Yonda, but, you know, I, for the rest of the other line, it's pretty, you know, pretty stock. Obviously, they double dipped with running backs. Not only do they have Mark Ingram, but they have J.K. Dobbins. And this is a team that basically is a mirror of what you are, I think, with uh, with offensive weapons. And I don't really think this early in the, in the season, our defense will be ready to take on this particular challenge, um, especially when it comes to our linebackers, man. Um, yeah, we have Jonathan Grenard, but he is a rookie. It will take time for him to adjust. Now, if Jonathan Grenard becomes a big factor in this game, that'd be great to see. If Duke, if, uh, Duke Etchefor becomes a great uh, weapon in this game, uh, that that's also good to see. Now, the one thing to, to watch out for, um, I did also want to mention Justin Ambuke from, uh, I believe he's from AM. He was actually on the Texans list. Also, as somebody who potentially could be drafted by us, and the Ravens picked him up. And how could I forget about Patrick Queen, man, their middle linebacker? Man, the dude, listen, I was so mad when the Ravens picked him up because I really wanted uh, him to be McKinney's replacement. They still got Matt Judon. Their contract talks have already opened. 
Um, you know, and then their backfield, uh, Marcus Peters, they got Earl Thomas, uh, which we're actually going to get into. Um, and so, yeah, man, uh, Martin Humphrey is still there. Uh, you know, so, you know, I feel like they had the better draft uh, when it comes to, uh, I want to say, every NFL team. They were one of the top teams to have a good draft. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll get blown out like we did last year because we're going to be at home. Uh, but I just don't see our defense making any stops. It might be just a shootout and... Listen, if, if Deshaun Watson happens to pull that win, it'll probably be because we had the, the ball in the last possession and, and did something with it, man. But, um, you know, it's a good challenge. I think it's a good challenge for the Texans, like, especially coming off of what I, you know, am, am uh, predicting, which is beating the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, that automatically calms them down, gives them focus to the next game. It's not like you're going to have a divisional game, you know, where you can maybe... You know, you're a little more familiar with the opponent, so, uh, you know, the preparation might not be as critical as it is with the Ravens. Uh, so, yeah, man, that, that'll be interesting to see. But one of the things that I did want to talk about is, uh, obviously, their, their, their safety, uh, Earl, listen, man, with, with what they're trying to do as far as take away his $10 million bonus, find a way to take that away, um, saying he violated it. I don't know how pleased he'll be with, with Baltimore doing that. I know, obviously, he wanted to play for the Texans so bad when he was a free agent coming out of Seattle. You know, DeAndre made the push, Deshaun made the push, and still Bill O'Brien did not did not uh, pull the trigger. Now, I can't remember if Brian Gain was around in that time. So, if if it was Brian Gain around in that time, I could see maybe Brian Gain say, look, he just doesn't fit our cap space. But right now, with everything that's going on with the Texans looking at that right guard and possibly cutting Fulton, and shout out to Fulton, man. I really don't not dislike Fulton. He was here. He was part of the line being rebuilt when you had, you know, Suofilo and people like that. So, man, shout out to him because he was like, a, I want to say, a cornerstone to help us build there. And, you know, was a solid right guard. Not an all pro, but I don't think he's completely bad. He's a good pass protector his run uh protection is just not as great uh but it looks like the right guard that the saints release is actually the opposite so i don't i don't really know if i prefer uh you know a uh um a run blocker more than a pass blocker because at the end of the day you know deshaun watts is gonna have to sling it and he's gonna have to get time to sling it so It'll be interesting to see what they do there, man. But yeah, right after that, man, we have the Steelers. We have we we actually fly out to Pittsburgh. We don't stay home. We fly out to Pittsburgh, and we play the uh, Steelers. Who um, obviously um, they're getting their quarterback back. I I don't want to. I want to say that Ben Roethlisberger has not had a healthy year in two seasons, um, and you know I, I I don't know what that to attribute that to. Uh, I don't know if he's just getting old or, or if, you know, it was just freaky injuries that he uh, picked up. But, um, yeah, man, they actually got the guy who I, before we actually got Brandon Cooks, uh, was hoping that the Texans would get. Case Claypool. Um, but, yeah, man, I mean, their defense is pretty stout. Their backfield is, is pretty solid. Uh, so this would be also a good challenge, I would say, from the aspect of, the Texans weapons and what they can do against a great defense. Listen, I don't have them going three and zero, but if the Texans happen to go three and zero, man, I really hope that they don't squander it because that it's kind of it's kind of in Bill O'Brien's nature to to beat the teams that no one really uh, expects him to beat, and then the the teams that people are, don't even want to talk about because they're like, oh, you know, like last year, oh, it's the Broncos, you know. Uh, teams like that, the Panthers with a backup quarterback, like, you know, teams that you should be, like, they don't go and beat. And it's like, and when it, when, the funny thing about it is that when the Texans have those type of games, it, it isn't, you can't just pinpoint one thing. It's like the whole thing is just a mess. Everyone just didn't come out to play. Which brings me back to my point, man. It, it's important to have those veteran leaders on this team. And Bill O'Brien said he went and got him some out, out there. Uh, with a via trade or free agency and so let's let's see what these veterans are going to do let's see how they're going to rally this team after having big wins uh and and get prepared for the following week so what i have is 
win at Chiefs, lost at Ravens, and I actually have them losing in Pittsburgh to the Steelers. Then we come back and we play against the Vikings. Now, everybody's making a big deal about this because Kubiak is the offensive coordinator uh, for the Vikings. And then, of course, their defensive coordinators, Capers, both ex-head coaches for the Texans. Um, obviously, they still have Dalvin Cook. They went and got out. They went and got the wide receiver Tony Jefferson in the draft. So it's not just Steelers. It's not just Jefferson. And obviously, they have their tight end, who his name slips my mind. Uh, almost came there, but slipped again. Um, so yeah, this really just comes down to who's the better QB. Deshaun Watson is the better quarterback. Therefore, I expect a win. So that would put us at two and two with the first four games, the first quarter of the season. We would stay at home uh, and play the Jags in week five. Um, I'm not gonna talk smack about the Jags, but I do know that they obviously squandered a very, very good defensive team. They lost Calais Campbell, they've lost Jalen Ramsey, they lost AJ Boye, you know, man, their linebackers are doing crazy stuff out there. Um, and you know they're 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 at odds with their running back. Uh, their quarterback is is not that experienced. You know the, their head coaching, their game plan is not that great. And Bill O'Brien has it, you know, in in his, in his pocket, so he knows what they're gonna call. Um, you know, I expect to win. Now I don't know if we're gonna blow out the Jags because at the end of the day, it still is a divisional game. And like I said. O'Brien has those games where we really just look so sloppy. We, I really have, I really feel like we have three tiers. You could actually say four tiers, but three, mainly three tiers of things that the Texans do. Right? They, they, they beat the opponents that you don't, that people don't expect them to beat. Right? One, the real good teams. Two, they play those sloppy games where they sneak out with victories because one or two players make that final decisive play, a.k.a. when we beat the Buccaneers. And three, they just completely don't show up. They just completely don't show up. And that's that's really been the the trend when it comes to Bill O'Brien and his football teams. So uh, going, I have them winning against Jacksonville. That would actually put us up 3-2 to two in the season. Heading over to Tennessee Nissan Stadium for week six, which I feel like it's going to be a battle because it's in their home. It's early on. And many people have talked about Derrick Henry, but hey, when you drafted, uh, you know, uh, our, our, our new DT, um, you got to answer the bell, man. You got to answer the bell. Uh, DJ Reedy, obviously, reacting from uh, Ross Blacklock's um, draft, he was like, wow, now I see why. So he felt disrespected. He felt some type of way. Look, this guy looks... Looks uh, at players like J.J. Watt. He reminds players like J.J. Watt. He 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 mocks his craft. He, I guess he's he really um, um, designs his craft to to imitate J.J. Watt. And I've heard him talk about Aaron Donald. Uh, so man, look, I've seen him out there still oh, after being drafted, trying to put in the work and sandboxes. So hey, man, more power to him if he goes up and shows out. And, and, and shows everyone why, you know, the Texans took him uh, at number 40 in the second round. Uh, but it's going to take him being a playmaker in that game. Now, the other guy that we actually haven't officially signed because he hasn't actually taken waivers is Tim Jernigan. Uh, so those two will be uh, keys for that particular game, stopping Derrick Henry. And we can, if we can stop Derrick Henry, I really don't see Tannehill having the type of season that he had last year. So I feel like he will regress. He will go back to what he truly is when he was with Miami. And that's just a really, really average, if not below average, quarterback. Now, going to week seven, we're now four and two. We are heading back home to, to take on the uh, Packers. I think this is actually a perfect week to take on the Packers. One, it's right before your bye week. And two, you're playing at home, right? But also, the Packers now have a dilemma that they themselves have created. Uh, their dilemma is that they drafted a quarterback in the first round who will potentially replace Aaron Rodgers in the future. Uh, so there's already been rumors and mocks about how Aaron Rodgers will feel about this. Given the fact that they only have Devontae Adams, as you all can tell, and 
it's like in the second round they drafted a running back if I'm not mistaken so they haven't really given the the weapons needed uh, for Aaron Rodgers honestly I'm surprised they could have took Chase Claypool and he could have paid out for them and they and they really didn't uh, even Ravens you know like like I said the Ravens stacked up on on wide receivers and Green Bay just just did not do it man and uh you know, it, it could definitely be by their head coach. Their coach, head coach likes to uh, establish the run first, then establish the passing game, um, which obviously with Aaron Rodgers, it frustrates him. We saw that at times last year. So I, I, I think it's really going to come down to how much turmoil <laughs> exists in the Green Bay locker room at that particular time. Look, they're, I don't think they're the type of Green Bay that existed with Mike McCarthy. They don't really give me any type of fear. I don't feel like we're going to blow them out, but I don't feel like they're going to definitely blow us out. And so at the end of the day, I think it'll come down to who's going to have the better second half in that game. And I'm going to actually jot that down as a win. All right. So we got a win in Kansas City. We got a win with the Minnesota Vikings, win with Jacksonville, win with Tennessee, and now a win with the Green Bay Packers. Going into the bye week, I and saying that the Texans will be 5-2, and two, which besides being undefeated, you really can't ask for more given the difficulty of this schedule. But man, you get a bye week. And the good thing about that bye week is that coming out of that bye week, you actually have the Jacksonville Jaguars in their house. And by this time, you should really have a true picture of what the Jacksonville Jaguars will be by then. And you'll be able to definitely know... If they're tanking for Trevor Lawrence uh, or if if uh, they're still trying to fight some way and call themselves one way or another, I guess, to maybe be the third best in the AFC South. Not too sure. Uh, I think what changes a lot of teams' perspective this year as to tanking early is the fact that you still have that seventh team now that can get into the playoffs. And as you all knew, Steelers was one of that team that if, you know, you would have had this type of setup in the playoffs, the Steelers would have been a team that was that was going to get into the playoffs. So I'm not too sure what, how early the teams will say, you know what, let's just cut it here. We'll begin to tank. And then, man, after traveling to Jacksonville for week nine, you now travel to Cleveland for week 10. Look, Cleveland doesn't, ex this, Cleveland doesn't scare me from this aspect. Uh, they constantly have new coaches. Yes, they have the talent, but nobody has gone over there and put the talent together. And on top of that, the guy who I thought that they should have kept, uh, their defensive coordinator uh, two years ago, who actually gave Deshaun Watson trouble when they came over here and we played them, um, is no longer there, man. It's not there. And who's scheming this, you know, this, who's scheming this, um, oh, damn spider, bro. Uh, who's scheming, you know, uh, the defense for them to stop our weapons? So, I know some people have them taking a loss there. I don't. Week 11, man, we're, we're heading back home after two games on the road. At this particular time, we would be 7-2. and two, Coming home uh, to play New England. And what we don't know of what that team will look like by then. Um, there's many people that say that there will also be tanking for Lawrence. There's people that say that they like what they have right now in their backup quarterback will they make a push will they have a good record there because depending on that record there that's what's really gonna determine how that game will go uh because at the end of the day look Bill Belichick is not gonna hand you a game they're not just gonna lose a game but they're not also just gonna like you know like give it to you easy right um so you know can can Bill O'Brien pull a consecutive win against the Patriots this year I got them taking the win against the Patriots, mainly because, man, they, they really don't have anybody at wide receiver. And besides trying to run the ball all day, there's not really much there, right? Um, week 12, man, for Thanksgiving, the first game of Thanksgiving, we travel to Detroit. If we were playing any other team on Thanksgiving, let's say we would play the Cowboys or anybody else, I would probably be at that game, but I am not going to Detroit. There's nothing to do there, all right? Uh, I got them. That one will be a tough win, uh, only because schematically, I guess we're similar in a way, right? 
but I don't see Matt Patricia uh, being able to stop our weapons. And that particular, I have us win. Now, we now come home after Thanksgiving uh, in the start of the December uh, games. And we play the Colts. We play the Colts for week 13, man. We play the Colts for week 13. I think at this point, we're what, 9-2? and two? Let's see. Win against the Chiefs. Uh, win against the Vikings. Uh, the Jags. Titans. Packers, Jags, Browns, seven, eight, nine. Yep, we will be nine and two uh, heading home to play the Colts. I think we're going to split with the Colts, to be honest with you. So we, I have us taking a win uh, there. Look, the, the thing about it is by week 13 and week 15, the Colts are really going to have a true picture of what they are with with uh, Phillip Rivers. And it's good for us, too, because we'll have enough tape of, of him playing with the Colts and how that looks. So obviously... I expect some surprises from Frank Wright because of the tape that's already out there. He has to come with some type of surprise. Uh, but ultimately, I see us taking that win. Then we travel to Chicago where a lot of people are saying, man, it's Trubisky. Like, we are we can win that game. I don't think Trubisky will play by week 14. I think Nick Foles will be at the helm of the Bears. I think the Bears themselves will be trying to make some type of push into the playoffs. So week 14 will have a lot of implications and um, a noon game that that helps out, right? Because uh, it can, it ends usually by 3 p.m. So even if it's cold out there, at least maybe the sun is out shining. So hopefully that's the case. Uh, like when we went back to when we went to Philly, I want to say two years ago. Uh, you know, when you looked at the schedule, that could have been potentially a bad weather game, but it ended up to be just fine. So hopefully that's the case. But either way, man, I have the Texans. Pulling out the win in Chicago. So we would play the Colts week 15. That I think is going to be turn out to be a Saturday game. You know, they, they consider that to be a primetime game, I guess. I don't really consider it that way. But, um, yeah, I, I think we'll lose that one. I think Frank Wright will look at uh, how we played them two weeks earlier. And we'll make some type of adjustments. It'll be a close game. And they'll end up putting the victory. Then we're at home for the last two games, man. We play the Bengals and Joe Burrow. Look, Joe... Uh, the Bengals' schedule is brutal, bro. The, the, for having a rookie quarterback, that schedule is brutal. But look, he was a great, I guess he was a great uh, college uh, quarterback. I'm not really a fan, to be honest with you. I'm not saying that the guy can't ball just because I'm not a fan. I'm just not a fan of the guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't see them beating us. Now, that will be DJ Reader's comeback game, though. So... Can that be, can that turn into a Broncos game? It potentially can, but DJ Reader usually doesn't sack the quarterback. Not Deshaun Watson going to let DJ Reader fucking sack him. Uh, I have us winning that. And then playing the Titans, man. I talked about this uh, with Real Talk in Soft Sports uh, Discord chat. Um, I was talking to him about this. He didn't think that we were going to play our stars against Tennessee. He had us marked at losing there in week 17. I don't. I think that the Texans will still be fighting for a bye week, obviously, by all the wins that you guys have noticed that I've given them. Um, I think the Ravens have a, a a pretty good schedule to be contending for that number one seed. I think ultimately they will get the number one seed. The Ravens will. But then I will be, I think we'll be in com competition with the with the Chiefs to get that second, that second seed, even though it won't be a bye week. We'll still be in competition for standing. So I don't see us resting our players on week 17. Uh, and I have us actually beating them and closing this thing out at home. Um, I don't think the Titans are going to get into the playoffs. So it'll be uh, interesting to see what they do come week 17. Are they still kind of fighting for a spot there? Or are they completely out of the thing? And therefore might be trying to get a good standing in the, in the following draft. Things to come and things to see. But yeah, man, I have the Texans going 13-3 and three this season. And it's... Solely off the talent that you have on this team, on offense, and Deshaun Watson. Listen, uh, I, I peeped something about Deshaun Watson yesterday when Visionary posted one of his kind of like highlight videos from last year of some of the things that Deshaun Watson did and how he retweeted it. Uh, and it seems that he is a little offended. Obviously, he knows that DeAndre Hopkins was a big and huge help to to assisting him 
and becoming a great quarterback, right? When you can throw the ball in an area code and that receiver just goes up and gets it, even though you might have underthrown it, overthrown it, whatever the case may be, um, it makes you look good, obviously, right? So it, it goes in tandem. It's 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 a it's it's tango. It takes two, right? So you know. I, I'm starting to see that he sees that people are really counting him out just because DeAndre Hawkins is no longer there. And look, he still has some of his favorite guys there. He has Kenny Stills. He has Will Fuller. You know, he has the tight ends that he likes. You know, he likes Duke Johnson. Uh, you know, and obviously the, there's still pieces on the defense that, that constantly are hyping him up during the game. So I don't see... I, I, I see Deshaun Watson see, uh, seeing what the media is saying. Look, yesterday, man... I was trying to find a video where they were talking about us going against the Chiefs on opening day, you know, in, in the in the main media, and I could not find one, man. They, they didn't care much to talk about. In fact, everyone skipped exactly to the Ravens and Chiefs game in week three. Uh, even actually, um, I can't remember who did it. I think the Ravens did it. They, they skipped us in week two and made us basically be like, oh, that ain't shit. Uh, you know, so I, I expect all these things to fuel our players. And ultimately, you know, that that grit, hopefully, they come together as a team and pull out major wins. But at the end of the day, like I said, I have them going 13-3. and three. Now, when it comes to the playoffs, I'm not going to give my prediction on that because it's obviously always going to count on the standings and who we play, you know, and where we play. Uh, but as far as the 2020 NFL schedule, man, the Texans will finish 13-3, and three, headed back to the playoffs to try to make a push and make a splash. And that's my spiel, baby. Hey, stop. Y'all kick it. Y'all take it easy.